no world peace until the Prince of Peace establishes his throne on this earth. That's the bottom line. Hi, Shalom. This is Victoria. And I would like to first talk to you a little bit about the prophetic harp. Now, in 2012, I was prophesied over to get a Davidic harp. Now, who played that? King David did. And I had no training whatsoever. And uh, I didn't take the prophecy to heart until the within a couple of days, I opened up my Bible and went right to the Davidic harp. So that's why I bought one. And then from there, it's been a journey because the Father um, downloaded me with the um his heart was for me to go as i travel because i travel a lot at that time i traveled a lot internationally and uh, i was to go to the different lands and then prophesy about uh, his return his second coming and i get very excited because we are getting into the season of the days you can see the days changing now we don't know only father knows when this event is going to happen but we can just see that things are definitely uh, changing around the world right now and personally I believe we're going into Revelation 13 and if you're familiar with that you know what that's about the beast and all that and clearly that's what we're we're going right into right now the the reset is happening okay but I want to talk to you about the harp because the harp uh, this particular harp uh, has been in various nations um, it's been in Russia it has been in Europe it has been in Africa it's been in the Middle East it's been in North America and the whole uh, thing that father wanted to to have the message go out again this is prophetically about his second coming now he also brought this woman uh, that I think this is so interesting. She received a word from the Father. The Holy Spirit told her that she was to get a silver trumpet. And it had to be silver. And she prophetically goes to the nations and then she prophesies whatever the Father tells her. So you see there are people uh, that actually are told to get particular instruments. Now these instruments, if you study in the scriptures, I think it's very interesting because trumpets were used by the priests in the temple. Also harps. Okay, so here's the thing too that I want to share it with you before we get into some other things that Father has shown me. And that is, okay, if I can get this pulled up, I want to share with you what I learned in BibleSearchers.com But here it says the most famous harp in history is the Harp of David. Now I don't know if you're aware of this and I didn't find this out until recently. Did you know that on the early flags of Ireland it showed David's harp? Also if you take a look at the royal uh, flag in England, the Brits, they also have the harp shown there and the Lion of Judah. So if you do studies on these things you're just going to be amazed at what you find out if you're interested in ancient history okay and so it, it goes on to say here the harp was a symmetrical harp known as the Kinner harp what we now know is the Mishnah is that wait, what we now know in this Mishnah is that David was not only an expert harpist and Psalms composer who used harp therapy in the royal court of King Saul but was also recognized uh, as a musicologist and builder of classical harp designs. Now, the, here's another thing that I think so to me very interesting, and it may be to you. Um, when he, you know, he remember he had taken the harp, uh, the excuse me, the um, Ark of the Covenant. He recovered it and brought it to Jerusalem, and for a while it was in the tent. But he wanted to build a house of prayer, an actual structural uh, building for that Ark of the Covenant and there's that's another thing you can go and do some searching on it just so amazing the things that you can learn even about that what were just to me were just I, I, I had no idea about any of these things as I certainly didn't learn them growing up so if you're interested in these kinds of things there's way way more to learn in these different subjects but anyway 
he had, when he had uh, the Ark of the Covenant, he had the priests do 24 hour worship. So they, you know, they had shifts and they would come in and they would do worship and they would do like free worship. In other words, there were times where uh, they would go into uh, the Holy, you know, I, I would say it's the Holy Spirit, even though they didn't know Yeshua at the time, the Spirit of God still flowed upon them and they would go into a, um, w whatever was being poured into them, they would would uh, quote it. So it, it became very poetical. And I thought that was very interesting. And it would have been, I think, very to me, very interesting and very exciting to actually watch them perform with all the different instruments. And again, the harp was a very key instrument that was used. And then you also find out that prophets, a lot of the ancient prophets, they used the harp. And of course it was called a kinner. And it dates clear back to the days of Egypt. If you do research on it, you just you you learn so many things if you take the time to research things out. So I did want to share these things with you, and then let's get on with the other message here that the Father's poured on my heart today to share with you. I want to talk to you about the Shema. You may not even know what that means, and it is spelled S H E M A, and that's the name of the ministry, Shema. And if you go to the New Testament and look at the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, I'll begin. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. 31. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So, when we talk about the Shema, we also want to think about, it is in the Old Testament. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Torah. I think it's so important to understand what it means, because it says clearly, He is one. But there are components of him. There is himself, I am, you know, Father God, Abba. And then you have Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. That, that, that's how he came in the fleshly form, all right, to the earth. And then you have the Holy Spirit, which is his spirit that comes inside of you when you ask him to be your Lord and Savior, when you repent and walk with him. And he gives you eternal life. In other words, he's the first that resurrected. He was the first fruit. And we will follow thereafter when it's our time. I think that's so exciting. So much for us to look forward to. When I do research and I go into these different things, I get just so fascinated because there's just so much to learn as far as the realms, the universe, the um, different galaxies. I personally, my you know, through all the journey, through all the years of study, through all the different teachers that I have learned from, I truly believe there are other creations that live on other planets. I think we're going to be very amazed when we get to heaven. I personally believe that heaven is a planet. You can do your own research on that, but in the Hebrew text, it mentions sphere, that his house in the heavenly realms is a sphere, which means round, like a planet. Much to, much to learn, and we won't be bored for a minute. If you look at what uh, we get, first of all, the gift of God is to give us the body of Christ, which means interdimensional which means thinking something and you're there it's totally totally you can hardly comprehend any of it because it's too mind-blowing the universe itself is mind-blowing to me when you start studying about all of it and it it's just so it won't be boring in heaven I'm sure and there'll be much to learn in heaven and there'll be many many different things we'll be doing we have gifts and they're eternal we're an eternal being when you accept Christ 
Yeshua into your heart and you surrender yourself to him there is I'm telling you your whole world is so much more exciting than what you can even comprehend so don't let Lucifer uh, dupe you because he wants to make you think it's dull and not not attractive at all but it's just the opposite I, I tell you I guarantee you that I have listened also to many others that serve the Lord and it's the most exciting thing they've ever experienced Anyway, I, I do think that this is important to learn about the Shema and what it means. Uh, and there are different components. And, you know, we've heard of the Trinity. Well, yes, there are three components. That, that part is really true. But he's still one. And he came to earth as flesh. And those are important key things that are in the scripture. Most importantly, he is the Word. And it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, he became flesh okay and he is the word that's who he is is the word so it's it, it's so much to grasp in our minds that it sometimes can get really to me mind-blowing amen I wanted to remind you that we have a website and you can take a look at the channel page and click on that and uh, we try to post some different things that are going on to kind of let you know um, a lot of it comes from BitChute and from Brideon, and uh, we have channel there if you want to take a look at the videos that I've got posted. Is now I think we have to really focus on the Lord. We have to learn about His ways. We have to learn who He is, because because we don't want to be in Matthew seven where He says, "Depart from me, I don't know you." We want to know Him. And so that's the things that I am trying to focus on now. I still post some different things that are relevant on those other channel uh, channels that we have, but we do have to, I feel it's critical to um, be encouraged by the Word of God. You know, He's the Great Shepherd. And that's how we can have our joy no matter what's going on. Amen? Okay, well, I thanks so much for taking the time to listen. I hope we'll catch up together again, God willing. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. Mm -hmm.